So now we're going to start speaking about heat generation, which is a interesting topic for piezoelectric materials. I'm going to introduce this in a general way, and then I'm going to talk about what it means for piezos. Okay, so if we have an electrical circuit, which is sometimes the easiest way, let's say there's some type of coil, which is a resistive wire, and we have it attached to some, you know, voltage source, let's say this is one volt, let's say this is two ohms. Therefore, what would be the voltage across, what would be the uh, amperage here? It would be the amps equals zero, or it would be I, right? I would be 0 0.5 amps. Uh, we know that the power in the system is equal to I squared R. Okay, 0 0.5 is a 0 0. Uh, 0.025, and R is 2. Sorry, this is not, 0 is not there. So that would end up being 0 0.5 equals the power here. So 0 0.5 watts is the power in this case. So we call this power, but in reality, this is a heat generated. This coil is now getting hot. Okay, we're going to write the heat generated is Q, and let's call this a G. And it's being generated rate, which is the power, 0 0.5 watts. <laughs> For, you know, its argument's sake, let's say the area of this coil is equal to um, 0 0.01 meters squared. Uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to cause some, like, you know, natural convection here. And we'd say the natural convection coefficient is going to be about 10. And this is generally true. Around the natural convection coefficient is going to be about 10. So what you could actually do in this case, given all of these data which I gave you, uh, also assuming that the outside temperature is, let's say, 20 degrees. So, so the surrounding temperature is 20 degrees C. Uh, and let's not worry about radiation right now. Uh, you can actually calculate uh, the final temperature of this coil and let's just go over how do you do that so basically we're just trying to find the temperature of a coil but soon we're going to go for go to a piezo and how that applies there so again what were the parameters i gave you i gave you that q generated was 0 0.5 watts the area was 0 0.01 meters squared and the natural heat convection coefficient was equal to 10. And basically, you can tell the units from just the equation that I had earlier. So how do we find it? So we should know in a steady state formulation, basically what's going to happen. Let me just show you over time. You just, let's say you just flip on the machine or flip on the voltage source. Uh, this is the temperature. So basically, what's going to happen is this. The temperature is going to increase and it's going to stabilize. It's going to get to the final temperature, which is going to call this TF. And this is temperature in general, in terms of, let's call this degree Celsius, this is time. So the temperature is going to increase. So we can measure and we can determine this sort of slope right here, this initial portion. Um, and we're going to, we, we could do that using the heat capacitance, but right now we're just going to be worrying about the final temperature. Okay, we're going to be working with the final temperature. And how do you determine the final temperature? It's a situation called steady state, which I think is very familiar uh, in many physics applications. Steady state, where the heat in is equal to the heat out. So the Q, gen, Q in is equal to the Q out, meaning the, the, the heat which is being produced or being transferred inside is going to be equal to the heat being lost. And this is what happens when the temperature is stable. Heat lost. What is the heat lost, or what is the Q in? This is QG. Well, you know, is I squared R. And what was Q lost? It was H N A T T uh, F minus T A, which is a T air. So let's see if we can. So now we want. What I'm asking you to do is calculate the final temperature. You know, I gave you these parameters. Uh, what did I say? What TA was. Let's say T, Yeah, TF or TA was equal to 20 degrees. So let's actually calculate. You know, it's a simple enough problem. Hopefully, we can do it without much trouble. Uh, we can calculate the final temperature. 
So we go with this is 0 0.5, this is equal to 10 times 0 0.01, this is equal to, we don't know what this is equal to, TF, and TA is equal to 20. Okay, this is equal to 1. And now we just have TF minus 20. So if we add this to the other side, 20.5 equal TF. So look, we just solve for the final temperature. Given this heat generation in this area, this area is actually quite large. This is why the temperature didn't increase very much. So um, it's actually not a small area. Uh, so even though it may seem so, uh, so then this is actually the final temperature which happens and we can know it due to the heat generated uh, The heat transfer coefficient and the area here So if you obviously if you decrease the area, let's say we made this area 10 times smaller be 0 0.1 If you made this 0 this would end up being 0 0.1 here, let's say if you made the area 10 times smaller this would be 0 0.1 the, the, this this results. So if you made the 10 times smaller, this would be 5 degrees C equals TF minus 20. So then you get 25 degrees. Look at that. Because you reduce the temperature, and if you obviously if you add in you know heat you know if you add in emissivity, you would get even a lower temperature. If you add in the effective emissivity, but not so much lower. But it depending as I said, depending on the temperature difference from um, from the, the the hot temperature to the cold one, basically the heated object versus the cold surroundings. Uh, based on that temperature difference, emissivity would be more or less important. But as we can see here, uh, we were able to calculate the steady state temperature. You know, again, this temperature right here, usually in piezoelectric devices, you're operating at continuously. Uh, therefore, I'm not discussing really this initial climbing portion but realize that eventually similar to a RC time constant formulation you're gonna to get to a steady state value and that steady state value uh, is not uh, is determined completely by these parameters right here the Q in and the Q out note that at any steady state formulation any steady state vibration or any uh, you'll have uh, you know your heat in is equal to the Q loss and this is the sort of the definition of the conservation of energy. You know, if energy is put in, energy has to come out. So, and this sort of happens, you know, the temperature changes until this equilibrium is met. The temperature in is equal, to the, the, the heat in is equal to the Q, heat out. So, if you draw another graph here, and another slide, and I'll draw a little bigger here. And if you drew, and this is Q, right? So the Q generated is constant. And this is the dot on it. And the Q lost is going to be like this. So the Q loss is going to be really large. And then it's going to be stable. And then both, then both of these lines are going to converge and probably it'll be a little more smooth. Uh, and this, this line up here is going to be Q loss through convection, right? And why is this decreasing? Uh, basically, it's decreasing because the temperature difference is decreasing between the two objects. Well, this is not exactly true. Back it is true, but this is not as extreme. I'm making a little bit more extreme change, but maybe it's not going to be like from here to like down there. So now if you want to draw temperature in a red color, what's the temperature going to look like? The temperature is going to be increasing, 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 increasing until we get to this point where the temperature in is equal to temperature out, then it will just stay flat. And this was sort of the region we were analyzing here. It's called the steady state region. Thanks for watching. Uh, in the next uh, video, we're going to talk about applying these concepts theoretically to a piezoelectric element. And then finally, we're actually going to apply it. Uh, or at least witness an experimentally heat generation of piezo ceramics and learn how to use a thermal camera.